So good afternoon, everyone. And I would like to thank AA Scientific Committee and Dr. Amit sir for giving this opportunity. So today I'm going to talk about glaucoma damage devices, basic steps, and some variation. So in the present scenario, GDD has become the essential in glaucoma management with the development of the availability, availability of the indigenous low-cost implant, RD. These procedures have become a choice of surgery in the management of refractory glaucoma. So what we are planning for GDD surgery, surgery should be the well prepared, and we have to think about what kind of surgery we are going, going to do. And uh, a long-term IP control depend upon not only on the meticulous surgery, it also depend upon the surface area of the implant that determines the blab size and tissue response to implant and the thickness of the fibrous capsule controlling percolation of aqueous humor into the wall. So plan your surgery at the, ahead and the technique also, what technique you are going to use and the, apart from the what size of the implant and what will be the location of your implant and what the position of implant into the anterior chamber or vitreous cavity or in sulcus, everything we have to plan ahead only. These are the various uh, damage devices are available. So most commonly used non-wall devices are bar belt and nadi, while the valve is a Ahmed glaucoma valve. So basically how to difference between the valve and non-wall, the valve devices provide the more immediate IP control and there's a low chance of the hypertony because the mechanism is working and the non blood devices are usually, usually often occluded with either the suture or with the stent but immediate IP control will not be there. It needs the anti medication till the suture has been lysed or you remove the stent. And the oral lab has developed it uh, uh, RD valve, this is a prototype of bar belt having three surface area of 350 millimeter. And the Ahmed glaucoma most commonly used in adult is FP7 and FP84 pediatric. Now the new valve have the silicon tube and silicon plate, so it has a good uh, outcomes. And these are the indications where the tubectomy is likely to fail, like Sturge Weber syndrome, Eisenfeld syndrome, and iradia. And these are some secondary glaucomas and some pediatric glaucoma are the common indication for glaucoma damage devices. So these are the basic steps of surgery. So basic steps between valve and non-valve is in valve surgery, we have to isolate the muscle and tie the ligature of the tube. And so coming to the surgery, so this is the case of the pseudophagic glaucoma. The case of the pseudophagic glaucoma, so the phonics based conjunctival flap has been made. Do the nice blunt dissection, isolate the superior rectus and the lateral rectal muscle, and muscle will be used to create the space underneath this muscle. So here we are creating a space under the muscle, and the potency of the wall has been. Uh, tube has been checked, RD tube has been checked, and this plate has been pushed under the belly of the superior rectus and the lateral rectus muscle, similar showing here. And at least this plate has to fix eight to nine millimeter away from the limbus, and the plate has to be secured by using the nino nylon suture, two nino nylon suture. Take the first skull bite first, when we're taking the skull bite first, and come into the uh, hole into the RD plate, and the knot automatically goes into the inside. So no need to struggle for the burying the knot because sometimes we have to bury difficult in burying knot and we can cut the knot. And this plate, tube has been fixed with nino nylon box suture. It should not be compressible suture. This suture has been applied. And after applying suture in the, uh, this uh, tube has been occluded by using a 6O or vicryl, vicryl, 6 or 7 vicryl suture. Usually, initially we started with the two vicryl sutures. Right now, I'm using only single vicryl suture. And the tube has been checked, either it's properly blocked or not. And the COVID drive, we really we struggle for the graft. We're not having, so we can make this tunnel, skull tunnel. And ap appropriate length of the tube has been cut around 2 to 2.5 millimeter. And 23 gauze needle has been used to create that track. And it has to be li really little careful because it's a partial thickness. So needle going on the same base, same movement you have to come back and push the tube into the anterior chamber. And this flap has been closed by using the two vicryl suture. And then again, if we have to keep in mind, it should not be too much tight closure, so the tube should not be pressed. And like any other surgery, tube surgery also need the meticulous conjunctival closure. So tube has to be nice, so conjunctival has to be nicely covered, and it need watertight closure. So 
Coming to the, in case we having the patch graft is available, so similar way we mark the tube and its bevel should be up, cut the tube at the 45 degree angle so you can get the nice bevel up and tube has been inserted into the entire chamber. After inserting, take the partial thickness corneal patch graft and the case patch graft is anchored by help of the nano nylon suture. And the conjectural closure has been done in a similar fashion. So nowadays we started the new technique is patchless long tunnel graft. So now no more we are using this any kind of graft. Mark the tunnel and mark the sclera by four to four five millimeter away from the limbus. Take the 23 gauss needle. We have to involve the half thickness of the sclera. And when we going and reaching into the limbus, literally we have to dip down the needle and take it out. It is little bit learning curve, but after this having this, uh, using this technique, the surface is very smooth and there is a, we don't, don't, did we don't find out the any kind of exposure, tube exposure is very good. And conjecture closure done after this procedure, similar way. So this, uh, this technique is avoid the micro movement and late tube standing. And the study done by the George et al. shows the good outcome in periodic and the adult glaucomas. So this is again the ab and turn down technique. In this technique, uh, we published in IGO recently, it's a 21 gauge needle has been used, taken from the opposite side of the limbus, coming from the limbus and under the pipe it has come out. And like the trail, trail, trail technique, this tube has been fed into this needle and needle is withdrawn into the anterior chamber. So exactly the tube goes into the sulcus without having any difficulty. Similar way, here also, tube is feed into the needle and it has been taken out. And conjectural closure has been done in a similar way. So that we publish in IGO and certain situation where a tube can't be placed into the anterior chamber, we have to do parsimonial vitrectomy and tube has been placed into the vitreous cavity. And the outcome are almost similar to the uh, anterior chamber. So coming to the AGB, AGB almost similar technique apply the good traction suture. Good traction is always good. You get the good exposure. Do the phonics based flap. And the valve has been primed. We have to take care. We should not touch this part of this AGB because we chances of the, we lost the valve mechanism. Again, this is the two suture has been used to fix the plate to the sclera. After fixing it, after fixing it, this, had, this case has been combined with phaco emulsification. So after doing the phaco emulsification, the tube has been fixed with box suture. The similar, similar fashion, 23 gauge needle has been used and the tube has been placed into the, and partial thickness corneal patch graft used and conjectural closure has been. Then in a similar way, now AGB also you can do with the long tunnel track, the no need of the patch, patch graft. We have to aware of the certain complication, tube related complication and consider the patient risk factor implant the uh, superiorly, uh, prioritize the placement of the material, recognize the cause of the tube exposure, and surgery should be well prepared and follow period is equally important to achieve the good outcome. Thank you for kind attention. Uh, Bajuriya ma'am, we'll take a comment from your side uh, and Dr. Satyan's side for his talk. Uh, thank you for your excellent talk because the audit tube has been modified by several people, by several methods now. And I think without the patch crafting, I think Ganesh is doing something different. You are doing something different. George is doing something different. I hope- uh, no, we, we are in the same page, same page, sir. <laughs> I know, all of you are in a different places, <laughs> though in the same institution. Uh, but then uh, we, we are eager to see that outcomes at the end of five years or six years later, whether the tube exposure is going to be there or not. That is the one thing which we are all concerned. Those which I did in 1996-97, some of them definitely got extruded in spite of the patch grafts. But of course, the 
the micro uh, movements are one of the reasons for the exposure and the issues. But we hope that it doesn't have that in this because it is quite tight. Though we are also doing that, uh, so hopefully. Yeah, I have a question. As you're saying that you know exposure is less, so apart from uh, uh, the you know there should be it prevents micro motion, but then there are other risk factors uh, for the uh, extrusion of the tube, and two percent is the incidence of you know any uh, surgery. If you have done hundred, then two percent can expose, and there are other risk factors if the patient has got multiple surgeries, if the conjunctiva is not in good health. So did you analyze that like uh, uh, the? Uh, micro motion is just one factor and you can prevent that by not inserting the needle uh, straight but at an angle so you just need it, you know the tube just uh, should take huh, two mm angle should be there so that is again and then it should lie flat and you can cover it with a graft so do you did you actually analyze the factors which are responsible for yeah so this uh, the two study but uh, this is a sort of time i didn't mention it for the study that by the Mexico, they include the 300, 316 patients over a period of the five years. Really, the incidence is very less. And the retrospective, Dr. George, I published in AOA that a study has included that a no exposure in compared to the patch graft versus the long tunnel track. And basically, why we don't get the exposure? Because the four to five millimeter, the covering of the conjunctiva is very smooth. Most of the time, we get the exposure at the initial part, and near the limbus only we get the exposure because the curvature, the eye curvature, we put you putting the patch graft and patch graft is rubbing to the eyelid. So that's the main reason we get that exposure. Here what we are doing, we are taking that long tunnel at least four to five millimeter away. When you cover the conjunctiva, it's a smooth covering. There will be no elevation. I think that is the reason why we are not having such kind of exposure in long tunnel track in compared to the patch graft. Apart from that, certain patient to do Exposed. We, I can't. Nobody can give you a guarantee. This is a part and parcel of G glaucoma drainage device surgery. We completely accept that. Yeah. But only thing is, it should not be too high. That's the only. But yeah. you know yeah. what? I'm doing from 2005, when I was doing the tunnel only, like the tunnel only person types, and uh, in after 10 years, the exposure is very high. Very high uh -huh. means very high. That is why I said those which I did in Truly 96, 97. Used. Those are the <laughs> patients who had the uh, exposure after. Uh, 10 years time. After so, 10 years, believe me, you should be prepared that somebody will or the other will walk into your So opinion. hopefully, we are hoping that it should not, but yeah. we'll have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can I comment? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I have just modified my technique, like I do a tunnel, but I stop 2 mm before the limbus. Take a flap and insert the tube through the flap. 2 mm, 2 mm. Just 2 mm. Um, I'm, I'm talking about 4 mm. If you take no, the... No, no, no. But <laughs> there is a flap through which the tube is gone inside. Yeah, same way. I told you that I yeah. make the big flap. Yeah, the first this, Now this is so called that... So for that last so many years I'm doing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ma'am, it's called the double double tunnel track RD actually. You make the two, two tunnels. Right now, we have the one more modified way. If you ask, I'm telling you. See an exposure of my own patients. Maybe, I, even I don't care. Maybe expose. What, what next time you can, next thing we can do, we make the tunnel to track the tube itself. No need for suture. First track, then second track, and directly put it in the anterior chamber. Director changes and that avoid the exposure. Ex actually, if you make a curved direction into the anterior chamber, really your exposure will be very, very less. But, Madhu, Madam, but it's going to happen, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I agree with you. So it, it is I not agree. that any, every patient is going to have an exposure. Yeah. We yes. Really, yeah. It is some patients we have an exposure. But so don't say every patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks a lot. But Can I just you. add a point? I, I'm I sorry. <laughs> Point we can is go well to the taken, next yeah. topic. I, I used to do <laughs> corneal patch grafts. Uh, now, mostly I'm doing scleral patch grafts. And between corneal and sclera, actually sclera exposure is much more. Mm. This is what I've seen. I'm, uh, you know, I'm planning to publish this. <laughs>